This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and uh, today uh, I'm going to share a thought that uh, I had, or did I have it? Hey, I'm not sure if I had it, um, which is very interesting because that's what the whole conversation is really about: is whether we have thoughts, and and if if so, if they're our thoughts, then how do we generate them, right? So I'm from the the school of of thinking of going, um, they're not our thoughts. We didn't have those thoughts. Um, those thoughts came through us uh, and were manifested in us um, via a whole range of things, right? But if we were born uh, in a different era, at a different country, we would, have, we, would have, we would have had different thoughts. And so this is the thing that people get really sort of defensive over an idea or thought or I mean intellectual property. And like I get it. I, I'm not. I'm not dissing that. I'm just offering up another perspective. And um, it's like, well, this is what I thought. And, you know, you, you're basically saying what I thought was stupid. But it's not about that because even, even thinking something is stupid is the thought. So it's like my thought is that your thought is stupid. That's what, that's what someone's actually saying. Now, there's plenty of complexities in this, which is very fascinating and interesting. But here's something to understand, though, is that why is that person so proud of the thought that came through them? Like, here's the thing. It's like, well, it's just a thought that came through me that I'm, I'm willing to share because I think there's some benefit to it. It's really different to being like, oh, my God, this is my precious thought that I, this is the ego part of us speaking that I own, that I, I'm speaking from. And because it's mine and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the owner of it, this person's offending my thought, which is offending me. So what they're saying is the thought is stupid, therefore I'm stupid and, and taking that up, which is not true at all. And it's, it's really quite fat. Well, it's like, well, I really look up to that person. It's like, well, that's a fucking thought as well, isn't it? It really is. It's like, well, it's what I value. It's like, there's another thought. But all these things, they're all things that if we grew up in different times or if we grew up in different countries, we would just, we would literally think differently. And the reason why is because there's so many factors, such as environment, such as marketing, such as the way we're nurtured, even our temperament, that go into the fact of how we generate these thoughts, let alone the meta programs or, or thinking patterns that we have and have established over the years. So it's really here about looking at it and going, when thoughts do come through me, do I have the permission and ability within me to be able to, to put the ego part of me aside of, how, of my ownership of these thoughts and simply put this idea forward, put this thought forward, as, as, as the thought rather than as me, right? And protect our thoughts and all this sort of stuff. And this is where it's like, it's not to take away the work somebody may do, the creative endeavor of bringing forward thoughts and then putting thoughts into action and, and so forth. It's not discrediting that. It's actually encouraging that. It's encouraging people to do that. It's like, well, they're not going to be rewarded. So what's the point? It's like, well, how do you want to be rewarded? Do you want to see this thought come to life and be improved? Or do you just want to own it so that for some reason that thought is always associated back to your name, which is simply, once again, just the thought. Just a, just a sound my face makes that means you, hey. And then, then grabbing that thought and then trying to somehow own it. It's just like, let it be. And it's so fascinating how much we can dictate the, the, the trajectory and the rules of our life based on things that are simply thoughts that are often aren't even ours. We're like, oh, you know, I think this. It's like, do you? Where did that come from? It's like, I used to get told as a child. So it's like, do you actually fucking think it? Or do you remember somebody else thinking it and telling you? See, we don't have to accept the shit that people say to us. This is another big thing. And it's like the analogy is wearing shirts, right? So if I like you and I go, wow, you're a fucking top bloke. So I get a shirt and it says top bloke. And I give it to you and you're like, fuck you, yeah, I'm going to wear this shirt. And so you wear the top bloke shirt or top chick, you know, whatever, top, whatever, top person, top 2019, no offensive. Anyway, and did I, did I tell you that I have a dog? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I could edit it out. It's just part of the conversation, I suppose. Either way, the, the point I was making 
is if we end up wearing this shirt and we're like, I'm a top bloke, and then somebody else goes, you know what, I think you're the f- you're, you're a total fuckwit, and I got you a fuckwit shirt, and you're like, oh, man, no. So you put on the fuckwit shirt and you mope around, you're like, oh, I'm someone's fuckwit. So this is how we kind of treat our thoughts as well. It's like, it's like just let the thought be the thought, because if someone's offending the thought and they go, this thought is dumb, and they pass you a... Uh, a, a cup of coffee that's called <laughs> the coffee mug says dumb on it right it's like oh, i'm not drinking that man I, I'm, I'm able to take your criticism but don't don't belittle it right and so what we can do here is then move into more of a civil discourse something that's going to be constructive as opposed to some sort of name calling and defending and offending or whatever the whatever sort of situation may be that is 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 literally you this is you as the individual playing a game from many years ago, right? This is where it can come into like, um, you know, the playground politics or the sandpit politics where it's just like, well, he called me this and he, she called me that and so on and so forth. It's just like, yep, yeah, forget it. Hey, if somebody's going to lash out, it's like it's just giving you an insight into their inner world. You don't have to accept that. Accepting it's a choice. And sometimes that's hard to do because it's like, well, I really value what this person thinks. It's like, which is, which is a fucking thought because... Here's the interesting thing. Someone goes, oh, I can't make decisions. Can you make the decision for me? It's like, how did you make the decision to, to, to choose me to make the decision? Whatever mechanism did that, fucking do that again. It's like, you don't need the person to make the decision for you. It's just potentially someone running under responsibility. But when we can start to really see our thoughts as just thoughts rather than our thoughts that represent us, right? And and we have we have a... Uh, a, a responsibility to to be able to bring this thought forward or to to stop the thought as well right to recognize a thought as a lie or as um, malicious or dangerous or whatever it may be and either either give it life or get rid of it and it, you know so it's it is extremely important right to be able to look at all of this and and make a decision as to, to, to choose to separate as ownership of our thoughts from the sense of going, I thought that. It's like, well, how did you think that? Where, where did the thought come from? Whereabouts in your brain did it come from? Also, if you can just think whatever you want, can you please think up a cure for cancer? It's like, no, you can't. It's like, well, h- how do we do that then? And it's like these thoughts just come through us for so many reasons and through our senses. I've already talked about why when something... Um, uh, when something makes sense, it makes senses. So if you ever hear someone say, that makes sense, just always ask them which one. But the thing about it all, the whole thing to look at with these thoughts, is to be able to separate from our thoughts because when we do that, we can start to actually test it. We start to test our thoughts and go, well, I mean, is that true? And in, if it is true, in what context is it true? Is it true in all contexts or just some? Because then we start to really look at things such as anxiety. We start to look at things such as de- depression. And we start to look at things that are, are limiting the way that we're communicating in our relationships, either with other people or the way that we relate to ourselves. And so I'm not saying that this is the, the, the highway to just completely getting rid of anxiety and depression. I'm saying it's a doorway into actually seeing it, rather than, seeing it inside of us rather than seeing it as an it. Because this is one of the things you you may hear people say, like and they talk about anxiety as an object. Now there is a, there is a can come up reaction that that that's can be basically objective. But what I'm getting at here is that they go on to talk about how it has them. It's like it's not an it. It, it the thoughts are not thoughts are not it. The the things that come through us, and it's really quite fascinating. And when we can step back and look at that, and we start to sort of well somewhat disassociate, but move out of the movie in our mind move out of all of that and we can start to see it for for you know what for the truth rather than for our truth and that's that's really fucking powerful because often our truth is just skewed because of all of the influences that we've had on our thoughts over the years because if we haven't done a whole heap of work then what's going to happen is that we're going to view we're going to view our reality through the lens that was gifted to us without us even realizing we weren't even conscious or aware and so then as adults, we're just making decisions based off all of the patterning that we developed and, and, and built from our, from our childhood and our teen years. It's, you know, this, this is how we can move from maturity to immaturity in a very, very, very fast way. And so the, 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 the highway here is just recognizing it. And when we, how do we feel when we do that? And then, check, you know, checking our thoughts. And then seeing our thoughts as something that comes through us, once again, and something that we are not necessarily a direct reflection of us at all 
That's interesting. Anyway, that's my thought for today. <laughs> on that note, Tim, if you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, jump on Facebook, so Smooth Prep Online, join the conversation, or start the conversation there. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to see you there. We've got a Q&A coming up within the next week or two. Um, otherwise, Tim, that's it. I'm out. I'm done. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. And slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. To be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned.